Okay, so welcome in. Super excited to share this bed deal with you guys. This is one I've been working on for a long time and uh, it's probably one of my top five projects. So first off, a big thanks to Prime Gen X for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna share more about them here in a little bit. We're starting this build off, um, breaking down a very large walnut slab. Uh, this slab was about 15 feet long by whatever width this is. I think it's about 30 inches. I think I see 31 written on there. Uh, so we're gonna break it down into parts. I'm not gonna share a whole lot of the milling process, but when we're working with a slab, we'll start on the big bandsaw, break out our parts, head over to the joiner, and process those parts, get a flat face, a uh, squared edge to that face, and then quite a few of these parts are gonna be veneered. That's one of the great things about working with a large slab, is we can pick grain sections and make cool veneers and do really neat things with that as well. The whole bed is kind of uniform, right? So it's all coming from the same log, or same board, I should say, and uh, the color's uniform. Everything kind of flows really well. So it's really exciting when you get to work with a piece like this. And you can see right there just how beautiful looking this walnut is. It came from Erion Lumber up in Pennsylvania, and I'm very pleased with the product and what we got. Now, a couple things about the design on this. Here's an overall look of what we're building. Uh, it's a really interesting platform bed with these skeletonized nightstands with dovetail drawers. I did design this piece, um, you know, not saying that to be proud. Just a lot of times we build things in here that are not my design. This particular piece is something that I designed for the client. So we go to the bandsaw and start resawing out uh, not only veneers, but even the parts. This was a thick slab. I think we were two and a half inches thick. Um, and so we could get multiple parts out of that thickness so we can set up and resaw. I've got the big resaw fence on right now. It's a little overkill for this piece, but we are cutting some large uh, pieces out. So when we have this big piece on, the door to the top of the saw has to be open so we can fit it. That gives us the full uh, opening of the jaw, this saw, which is about 16 and a quarter, 16 and 3 eighths. And here's a really wide resaw and just a beautiful display of what this machine can do and how well it can resaw and cut uh, wide material without any real issues. So it makes quick work of it. It's an awesome machine. Love it. Another good thing is as we resaw this, we're noticing we're not popping or having any tension in the wood. Uh, that's a reflection of quality material and uh, it helps us a lot in our process because we don't have as much waste. Now the headboard of this uh, bed is a, a full section of the live edge of the slab. So the first thing I'm going to do is rip off the the bark edge on one side. So I'm gonna pick the side I want to go to the floor, rip that as a straight line, and then the top side, we're gonna leave the live edge and keep that cool look. I'm not gonna share a lot of the processing of the slab. Um, basically what I'm doing here is just straight lining and then squaring the ends. A lot of times when we use a track saw and a big thick piece like this, we'll do, I just call it a score cut. We're cutting like halfway through the slab just to kind of help release some tension. You try to do a full cut, especially a cross cross cut it's gonna bind pretty good chance of that so if you do that score cut come back and do a final cut you don't get the binding and the burning and you get a little bit better cut a little bit less a uh, little not as quite hard on the saw too as well so this is a new contraption I recently came up with it is a 10 foot long by about 60 about 60 inch wide aluminum frame that we can put on the bed of my CNC the CNC is a 5 by 5 so if I want to flatten something larger than that, this allows me to do that. I can, we can see how we shim this slab up on there and then we can cut the half of the slab and then slide the whole aluminum flat frame over, keep that slab in the same position and then finish the other half. It works great. Um, it's awesome. We've used it a few times. This thing right now is taking about an eighth of an inch on this pass and it takes a while to do this. Um, it's definitely a couple days of work to set this up and make it happen. So while we're cutting these mortises, I want to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Prime Genix, who offers cutting edge, scientifically backed, 100% natural formulas that you can trust and rely on to prove your health. Now, I am 42 years old, and I have noticed lately that um, I get tired a lot. I get kind of foggy. I lose concentration. I get so tired that I just want to take naps in the middle of the day. Now, for a while, I supplemented that with a lot of coffee 
which actually in turn created heart palpitations and I actually ended up in the emergency room about three or four months ago because my heart was skipping beats and uh, it's not really fun. So I wanted to find new ways to improve my stanima, my focus, and uh, adding testosterone supplements was the way to do that. Now I also like to mention that um, I've lost a lot of strength. And if you didn't already notice, I'm kind of losing some hair. Now a couple things about PrimeGenX Testogen. It contains a compound that is clinically proven and has a US patented formula shown to increase free testosterone up to 72.87%. It's 100% natural, which is a big deal to me. I don't wanna have uh, fillers or preservatives in any supplements I take. It also doesn't include any gluten, soy, eggs, wheat, dairy, sugar, or preservatives. Primegenix Testadrin is clinically proven to help men as they age, rejuvenating youthful energy levels, both physically and mentally. I'm also hoping that it helps put on more muscle mass and get my strength back up. <sighs> Supplement in combination with working out will help uh, increase my muscle mass, help keep it stable, also, just keep me active and um, able to hang out and play with my kids for the foreseeable future. That's really the main goal for me. Now, the good news is Prime Gen X is offering a free bottle and free shipping on your first order of testogen. Just go to www.primegenx.com forward slash Andy Rawls. I'll link it in the description to make it easy for you and go get your free bottle. A really big thanks to Prime Gen X for supporting the channel, for sponsoring. Now, let's jump back into the build. Okay, so uh, you were kind of seeing the process of cutting the mortise. This is the platform frame. It's gonna be knocked down, so this mortise needs to be pretty clean because it's not gonna be glued up. We want a nice snug fit that um, gives us some mechanical strength when it's not glued. So it needs to be, we need to have a good fit here. And the mortiser is the tool for this. We're cutting a through mortise. So right now I'm coming back. We flipped the part, we cut on um, the other side. Now we're flipped it and we're coming back through and uh, clearing that out. So you wanna have everything dialed in really good on your machine to do this well. And you wanna have your tooling sharpened and, and you can tell right now how this is cutting. It's no, there's no smoke. We've got good shavings coming out. Everything is tuned up really, really well. It's working great. And we're getting a good cut. You're gonna see here in a second how good this cut, cut is when I take it off the machine. This particular machine was built, I think it was built in the late 50s. It was owned by a school district, I think in Ohio, and uh, I bought it uh, probably about four years, five years ago, uh, restored it on this channel, and it's been an awesome addition to the shop. So there you have it, nice clean through mortise, everything lined up well, worked out great. So we're gonna transfer into tenons now. Uh, gonna do those with the dado stack on the table saw. This is kind of an easy, quick way to knock these out. A lot of times I will bance all the cheeks and then cut the shoulders on the table saw. But here we're just going to hog out the waist with the dado stack. When I do this, I got my table. That's why I got that can of wax. I'm waxing my table, making sure that it's easy to push through. It's a long piece, so I want to make sure I'm not letting it raise up off the table and missing the cut I want. And then we're coming back. We've got a pretty large haunch on these, so that's just a step. You'll, you'll, it'll also make more sense to me when we finish this, but it's a step back. Um, and it's a pretty large one because since this is a breakdown joint, we're not gluing it. I don't want to be too close to the ingrain on the mortised piece because you know, if someone's trying to assemble this and they tweak it, it could pop that ingrain. It's a weak point in the joint. So the further back I step this, the stronger it gets. Now, like with all my joinery, I generally do the fitting on the bench at the table saw. I'll get really close to a fit, and then I'll use this little Lean Nielsen block plane to dial in my fit. I actually have a video over my Patreon on why I love this plane, on uh, how I use it. Uh, it's a pretty cool video, so if you're interested in supporting the channel that way, uh, that link is in the description. I fit most of my tenons with this plane. It is missing the thumb screw, um, but it's seen a lot of years of hard work, so uh, it's, it's a little bit beat up. I need, to, I need to do some work on it. I'm gonna sand these as well. Just make them look nice, get any marks out of them, because you're gonna see them. Um, we're gonna check the fit here, and this is a really good fit for, for a breakdown part. And I, I just wanna stress that in the video, it looks like it happens fast. There's quite a bit of work to make these fit and, and look like they do, so. Uh, don't get discouraged if you think, man, he does that fast. 
Now we're gonna go back to the robot. Uh, I'm gonna use it to cut pockets in all of these pieces. Now that if we cut the tenon, these pockets are gonna hold the slats. So we're gonna do a dovetail, which I think, you know, not only mechanically is it good, it gives it some strength to the bed because it allows, it keeps those uh, rails from pulling apart, um, but it also just looks really cool. And it's easy to do with the CNC. So now we move into the nightstands. This is probably my favorite part of this build and incredibly complicated parts took a lot of work. So the first thing we gotta do is drill a lot of holes and we gotta drill them very accurately. So we start with dividers. I'm gonna lay out all the parts, the top of the nightstand and the bottom of the nightstand with dividers. And um, that's gonna ensure that every hole lines up where it needs to be. Now the reason we need accuracy here is that we've got fitted drawers in this case. And anytime you're making fitted drawers, your case needs to be very well made and um, square and the openings need to be proper, coplanar and all that. So there's a lot to figure out here to make that happen since we're doing spindles as our side. Now I'm using this marking gauge to start my layout. It's going to register off the back of each piece. So I'm going to set that, mark a pinhole in each part and then pick up my dividers and start from that pinhole so it's consistent across all pieces. Also, you may have noticed earlier in the first shot, I had a line scribed down the end of the board. That's with the marking gauge as well. That marks my step in where I want my holes. Using marking gauges and dividers is just the most accurate way to lay anything out. Now I'm gonna go to the drill press with a really good Brad Point bid, bid, bit, and uh, drill out all of these holes. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, you just use a CNC, why not use a CNC for this? I debated doing that, but I honestly felt a little bit uncomfortable doing it. I, I felt like I could do it better myself on the bench and you know not make a mistake. It's gonna take a little longer, but I know I can get it right with the CNC. We've got these fairly expensive veneered parts here um, that you know could get ruined real quick if the program's not right. So I just felt, you know, I'm gonna take my time on this and know I can get it right. I got Judd, my helper in here, clearing the shavings, doing an awesome job. Love it when he comes up to the shop and uh, helps out. Judd's the one out of my three kids who's just really interested in the process. He loves to watch. Um, so it's, it, that excites me when I see him coming up and hanging out. Oh, sorry, bud. That's okay. You do this one, okay? Okay, so now we're going to the lathe for, for several days here. I've got 48 spindles to turn for these two nightstands. There's 12 on each side. It's a lot of work. So a couple things about these. these. These have to be perfectly identical. Now I talked to a guy who had a duplicator uh, CNC lathe and he thought they were too small to put on his lathe. So I had to tackle this myself. And basically what we did is we shouldered out all the blanks on the table saw so we set all of the stops or the shoulders on these spindles in the blank prior to going to the lathe. So that way we knew they would all be consistent. And then for me, it was just a matter of coming in, turning 3 8 tenons on the end here, a 3 8 tenon on the other end, and then there's a transition in the middle of this to from a 3 8 spindle to a half inch spindle. Now this is sounding all really confusing, I know, but as we get through this and assemble, it's gonna all make sense. So right now I'm turning down the top half of the spindle to 3 8 that's where the top drawer is gonna go. And then we're going to move to the bottom section, which steps to half inch, and that's where the bottom drawer will go. The reason we have a step there is there's a middle section to this uh, case, and it needs a register point. So we put a step in every spindle so that middle section can lay down and set down on that point register and um, be exactly where we want it. Now we're going to do one other thing when we assemble this that you'll see to make sure that that happens, um, but this is... This is an important part of the process right here. I do a little bit of sanding. I like to use that block with some sandpaper just to kind of get high spots out. It's really hard to turn that small of a piece um, nice and flat. 
and then we put it in the box and we get the next one. So this gives you an idea of what they look like. Those are all the blanks there. Obviously we've cut the shoulders and then I'm turning all those. There's a lot of work turning these. Uh, I actually enjoy it. It takes focus. You kind of got to get in the zone and just go. Okay, so we just talked about these middle frame that drops down. This is probably the most expensive part on the piece we're working on here. And we're doing the same thing. These dividers are set up the exact same they were for the uh, tops and bottoms we laid out. And we used that same registering pin with a marking gauge. So I kept those off to the side of the shop, hit them, didn't want my kids grabbing them, didn't want them to be used. I needed to keep those settings. Another reason I kept them is in case something went wrong, I'd come back and rebuild a part and have everything dialed and still set the same. Here I'm cutting uh, quarter inch mortises um, in these and um, it's gonna be hard to explain what's happening here, but it's gonna make sense. Just stay tuned, stay with me and we'll get this thing assembled. Okay, so just like we drilled out the top and bottoms, we're gonna drill out these side pieces. Robert's working on breadboard ends on the slab. Like I said earlier, we didn't feature a lot of the slab section. I've done a lot of breadboard ends on this channel. I'll link those videos. Uh, I'll actually put it up here for you if you're interested in seeing how breadboard ends go. I'm focusing more on the nightstand. So I was having issues. I'm using a Forstner bit with getting it in my the little hole my dividers made. So I came in with a really small brad point and just made a tiny hole. And that made it a little bit easier to get the, the tip of that uh, Forstner bit lined up and in the right spot. It's hard when you, it's a, it's a half inch bit. I kind of lose it with my eyes. My eyes are getting worse as I've gotten older, as we talked about earlier in the video. Um, getting old isn't fun, to be honest with you guys, but it is what it is. So that hole just kind of helps make sure I land in the right spot every time. And again, we're just drilling out a whole bunch of holes. When I'm done drilling out the half inch, I'm gonna switch over to a 3 8 Forstner bit. And then a little tricky here, we're, we're drilling through, so I'm stopping, just putting the tip through that piece of wood and then I can come back and find that hole that I've made and finish the cut. Uh, the start of this is a little tricky because you're going from a half inch to a 3 8 and that half inch hole is like, I don't know, 5 8 of an inch deep down in the part. So, you gotta find it and make sure it's centered. You don't wanna get off centered on it. So it was just a matter of taking my time and making sure that um, I wasn't speeding through this too quick. Okay, so let's take another look at the part here on the CAD program. We're going to now make two rabbits on both sides and you can see how this kind of makes sense in the, in the rendering here. Uh, so basically on the table saw, we're cutting these and then I'm going to flip it and cut the other side. Now you're going to see here a, a little bit of a mistake I made. I didn't get those mortises quite centered in the part, um, which is a little bit of a bummer. Now what ends up happening is I have to match that with my tenons and make offset tenons. So it makes things a little bit more difficult and just a little bit more time consuming. But sometimes these little things happen and you just kind of got to flow with it and make it work. So the final step on these very expensive parts, a lot of labor in these, is to cut out the little scoop on the ends, which this allows kind of a window through to see the dovetails of the drawers. I made a jig on the CNC, it kind of cradles over the part, and then I'm just using a little palm router to start the cut, and then we'll come back with a big router and uh, make the final pass. One thing here that I thought was really cool that I did was I hit the middle of that hole so you're gonna see when you look at the front of this uh, nightstand and you look at those spindles, you're gonna see that first spindle, kind of how it goes all the way through it. And there's just a little sliver there that it's passing through. So it's kind of a cool feature. I think it has a cool detail to it. And then the last pass with a bigger bit, and that's gonna finish this off.
Okay, so I'll pull out the smoothing plane and clean all the edges up, get saw marks off. I don't like to use, you know, you don't want to use an orbital on this part. You want to use a hand plane. It makes nice, clean, crisp faces, and uh, everything will look a lot better if you hand plane it. Now one final step I'll do too is I've got a really nice Lee Nielsen shoulder plane. And so those rabbits I cut on the table saw, so I wanna make a few passes on those and make sure that they're perfectly flat. There's no high spots, there's no spots where the part lifted up on the table saw. Uh, and the reason for that is because these, these are the tracks for the drawers to ride in and we want those to be accurate. We don't want any bumps or anything that would cause the drawer to bind. And the final part, I thought these parts were done, but they're not. I remember this actually, now it took a lot of time to do this, but it's just getting a card scraper in on these ends and sanding those and making them look nice because your eye is gonna go right in this space. You can see here as I assemble it, um, kind of how that looks. And the assembly on this was obviously not easy. A lot of little pieces to get lined up. I'm doing a dry assembly because I need to get a measurement for the two rails we're gonna make that will fit into those quarter inch mortises we cut earlier. These, generally what you would do is make this frame first, but just the way this, everything is backwards with the way this has to be built. Um, so I'm making the two sides, getting them all installed, and then I'm putting my part up on the two sides and marking the shoulder of it. And so I just take a knife, mark it, and then I'm gonna go over here and transfer that around. I'll have a shoulder mark. I know this is exactly where the shoulder of that part needs to be. Notice when I'm transferring this around, I'm keeping the square on the same two edges. Um, and that's how you get a line to go around a board and, and match up. If you move it off of, and if you're just using random edges, you know, a lot of times your line won't line up. You'll get all the way around the part and it'll be off by an eight. So we'll go back to the table saw, same deal. We're gonna cut the tenons on the table saw with, I didn't use a dado stack here. I just used a regular blade. It's probably because I'm lazy and I don't like changing out blades, but uh, I just made a bunch of cuts. And I, yeah, I noted earlier that these mortises were a little off center to the part. So having to match that with these, and it is taking a little bit more time because now you gotta keep things in order, make, make sure parts are with parts and keep, the right faces and it's just, it complicates things. Uh, just like we did with the block plane earlier on the bigger tenons, I'm coming in here with a, a router plane, sorry, blank there, uh, to do the same thing, but it's a smaller tenon, so a router plane is gonna work a lot easier to kind of shave it down and fit that tenon. And then we're gonna do a dry assembly here, make sure we're happy with how everything fits. And you get a really good idea now of what we've been working on. And it probably took me a couple days to build this frame. All right, so we finally get to the glue up. Uh, please note that I have pre-oiled all the parts. Saves a lot of time on glue cleanup. Also, I'm not putting any glue on the tenons, on the spindles, just putting glue around the hole because I don't want, I don't, you don't want to be cleaning glue out of there. It's just, you don't want squeeze out in this situation. A lot of times people ask me, how much glue do you want? Well, you always want enough to have some squeeze out because then you know you have enough glue. But in this particular case, I'm just, I'm not going to use quite as much glue because I don't want to spend, you know, a whole day sitting there with a chisel and little bitty gouges trying to clean glue squeeze out. Okay, so I get these hammered in. I'm going to, you can notice there that I didn't put any oil in the middle section, so I'm going to use epoxy. We're going to switch over to Total Boat Epoxy. It's the epoxy I always use. It's got a slow hardener in it. It gives me plenty of open time to go through here and get um, epoxy on all these parts. This is just a long glue up. So I don't mind using tight bond on the bottoms because I'm seating those. I'm hammering them in. There's no clamping. So once they're seated in place, the glue can set. Here I need time. I need This thing's not easy to get on, as you can tell. Once we get it all lined up, we can uh, hammer it home. It's a cool shot watching that thing go down. And so I made these 
these are not the actual drawer sides, but those boards are gonna be the exact same width from side to side, and they're gonna establish kind of my opening size. It's really important that you do this. You can't just hammer this down and expect everything to line up. So we put these boards in, and this will make sure that um, the case is coplanar across all openings, and um, the, si the openings are all the exact same. Very important step here. I did, you know, we talked earlier about the spindles and the shoulders. Those help a lot. Um, that is totally necessary, but the final thing that really makes this to where it can fit a drawer well is the glue up using boards spacing things out. Having a little bit of trouble with this top one, getting it to drop down. Um, took some pretty hard bang in there, but it, it, it got where it needed to be. So you can see here kind of how this nightstand just has such a unique look to it. Now I want to say that um, I, this is not completely original to me. Uh, I saw a guy in San Antonio, a good friend of mine, Mike Roberts, who's a furniture maker, built a piece like this and put it in a furniture show. And I saw it probably three or four years ago and I thought, man, that's such a great idea to see the drawers because the drawers are so beautiful. And um, that's really where I, it clicked in my head it was from Mike's piece. and. Um, I took it and ran with it and did my own thing. So I want to give credit where credit's due there. Uh, I'll link his uh, Instagram in the description, his website as well. You can check out his work. He's a good guy. And I think as furniture makers, anytime we draw on inspiration, we should share who we drew it from. It's only the, the right thing to do. All right, so I'm shifting gears now to the aprons, the bottom of the bed. These are veneered, as you can tell. Um, we did that mostly so we can run the grain all the way around the apron. You can see right here there's a grain match on that miter. It makes a nice clean look. You can also see we've assembled our mortise and tenon, our platform. Um, so this is going to be what goes underneath that. And it's got to be, everything's got to break down. So that's one of the cool things about how this bed was made. So there's a cut there in the middle and these two, at the miters we're going to install hinges and fold it closed so you can transport it and move it. Now this middle joint's a little tricky because we want to be able to pull it tight. So what I'm going to do is cut uh, kind of a half dovetail, sliding dovetail in it, and I'll, I'll space it out in a way that when you install that dovetail, it's going to actually pull these tight. And that's probably not making any sense, but it will as we get further down the video. Um, probably going to be in part two. We're going to be closing this one down soon. You'll have to come back to see how this bed comes together. But basically what I'm doing here is just hogging out a dado on the table saw and then we're going to turn around and get out the router and cut a dovetail on one side of this dado. I transfer that dado to the other part just using an, a knife. Uh, it gives me an accurate transfer, easy to do. Now I'm just cutting right up to my layout lines. Another great thing about using knives and, and marking gauges is it's much more accurate than the uh, a pencil. You know, a pencil line is can be you know can be thick, can be a 32nd, can even be a 16th. It's not sharp. So um, a knife wall, a knife line is accurate. One pass here. That's how you got to do these dovetail uh, bits. And I use the fence on the router and just you, know, you got to be careful here not to torque it and twist it and just make a nice clean pass the whole way. Working at night, we do that a lot. Um, this was a grind to get this bed done in time for the client, so uh, just putting in the hours. So when you come back and make that dovetail, that pass with the dovetail bit, it's not uncommon to maybe go a little too deep. You can fix that with the router plane, um, just set it and get the depth all leveled out. And it works for the router. The router plane is an amazing plane. Highly recommend getting one. Back to this, another plane I recommend. Again, on Patreon, I've gone all. I've gone completely in depth on this plane. Um, I'm using it to fit the the actual sliding dovetail piece. So we're going to make this out of walnut, um, and then actually, it's the way this works is it, it'll fit in that dovetail opening, and then we will apply it to a piece of plywood, screw it on there, and create kind of a frame that when you put it together, it pulls these, pinches these two pieces tightly together so you don't have a gap there when you assemble the bed. And that'll make sense as we go into part two of this build. You'll get to see um, 
the dovetail drawers out of sycamore which we milled from the sycamore log years ago if you've been with my channel for a while an amazing sycamore log we're finally using some of that material finishing up the platform section and the headboard uh, in the next video getting it all done so stay tuned with me uh, leave me a comment let me know what you think of the video and um, appreciate you guys tuning in